Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Conversations with Glenn. And um, uh, Glenn, some have described you as, um, I think the term is a chronic oversharer. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, well, I got my source. You was want Glenn. to see my x-rays? <laughs> <laughs> my source was glennbeck.com on that, by yeah, the way. Right. Um, but, uh, I saw so that, Wilson. <laughs> I know who wrote that. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> someone. We have a oh, special guest. Someone else. Yeah, this yeah. is Wilson from yes, glennbeck.com. Yes. Um, I'll tell the handcuff story if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> but you're no stranger to uh, sharing personal uh, things uh, on the radio and on the television. Would you say this week was the most personal uh, ever for you? Or not? I, I, I could see I it mean, being no, because it's... it's mm, second, probably. But, but, but close to it. Close to it. I mean, it's a tie. What's the other one? It's personal. When he, uh, it's when I uh, trying to yeah trying to yeah. T torpedo my career and um, talked about alcoholism and everything else that I had done in my life and and really tried to set I, I really set out to tell people what a bad guy I was you should you shouldn't listen to me you shouldn't listen to me because these are the things I've done this is who I am bad and this was back in the top forty days right and they were telling you not mm -hmm. to do it they told you not to do it right is that right. No, they didn't. I, it was a spur of the moment thing. I, they didn't know. I was just being honest. I had just gotten to the point where I was so tired of top 40 and I was so tired of the game and pretending that I was somebody that I wasn't. You can't keep that game up very often or for very long. And I was just tired of it and, um, and wanted to get out of radio. And so I was just like, you know what? I mean, some, some, I don't remember what it was, but somebody said something on the air and one thing led to another. And I'm like, and I just decided, you know what? Let me tell you. And I started in, and uh, everybody in the room, it's when you know, when you had one of those morning zoo things, so everybody in the room, you know, they were all on microphones, and nobody said a word, and it was like, ah, uh, <laughs> okay, somebody hit a commercial, please. And I hit a commercial, and I, I went out, and I took my headphones off, and I looked at Stu, he was an intern at the time, and I said, this is the day. Write it down. I'll never forget. Write it down. This is the day that Glenn Beck ended his career. The opposite happened. Because I was honest for the first time. You were uh, pretty nervous about this week. Excited, nervous. How's the audience reaction I have no idea. Been? I have been really touched by how many people have written and said, because you did this, I did this, and somebody else did that. And so I've seen the pivots in people's lives, and I've seen the connections that, mm -hmm. um, you know, just something that we said or something that we did, and, and I've been touched by how many people have been, excuse me, I'm glad I bore this knot out of myself. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I've been really touched by the amount of people who say, that um, a few people, I was about to give up. On that day, I was about to give up, and I turn your show on, and you say that to me, I'm in. Powerful. It's neat, it's really neat. What does that do you, I mean, especially this week, what is that, um, how does that make you feel? Because you, you've had that effect for a long time now. Do you feel like this week, you, that you're feeling off. any, what's that? It wears off, you don't yeah. notice it anymore. You go yeah. home just like you. I mean, Dan, you do it. Wilson, you have to. Tiffany, everybody does it. Does anybody even see me? Do I make any difference? Is anybody? I mean, everybody does it. I don't care if you're working at the copy machine or you're, you're me. Everybody does it. I, I don't matter. It doesn't matter. I think it's, I think it's, you know. Personally, I think it's Satan that puts that into you. But it, you know, maybe it's just the natural man to doubt. And you just grind things out, and you're just trying to just put one end of the day back to back with the other end of another day. And just trying to make it to bed without screwing it all up. And, um, and so you just get into that where you're just like, I don't know. And you get so busy in your own thing that you don't look up and see what's happening. Good and bad. I, I, I went for a walk with a dear friend of mine one time. Um, he's an older guy, and I was up in the mountains, and um, it was late at night. 
And he's like, okay, I'll see you later. I'm going to walk home. And I'm like, it's dark. You don't have a flashlight. You're a thousand. I'm not going to let you walk <laughs> home in the dark. And I said, no, let me take you in the car. And he's like, no, 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 I'm just going to walk. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to walk with you. <sighs> and I put my shoes on and I go for a walk. Well, we ended up walking to his house and then halfway back to my house. And we split the difference. Okay, you walk halfway back to your house, I'll walk halfway back to mine. And most of it was in silence. The rest of it was about the stars. And um, he looked up and he said, can you name that star? I'm like, every, every time. North Star? No. Big Dipper? No. I'm out. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> and uh, uh, he said to me, Every man should know the stars. You should be able to plot your course by the stars. He grew up in a different era. Didn't have GPS. He had to use a sextant when he was in the Navy. And um, that struck me. Every man should be able to see where he is and plot his destination by looking up to the heavens and plot their course. We don't. We don't even see the stars in our cities anymore. And how many of us in our, life, in our life don't stop and go, have I drifted? Where am I going? Where have I been? Where am I now? You just launched, I mean, a bunch of huge ideas this week. Um, how, are you, how are you feeling now that you've kind of like got all of this out this week? Are you feeling like overwhelmed? Are you feeling relief? Are you feeling like let's let's get busy? <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually <laughs> frustrated because I didn't get to I didn't get to Crazy Horse, which I absolutely love. We didn't get to the Christmas sweater. We didn't get to radio. We haven't talked about what we're doing on television yet. I mean, it's funny because I don't know if the audience is overwhelmed by what they've seen. I don't know if I don't I don't know if they even I don't know if they watched. I don't know if they care. I really don't. Um, that's the, been the worst part about this, is... No measurement. No measurement. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. But if they're overwhelmed, uh, it's funny because you ain't seen <laughs> half of it. Yeah. How did you guys pick these four projects to show versus the other ones? Um, picked them because we thought that they had the best connectability to people. We thought, you know, if I talk about the radio show, it's really esoteric on what we're going to do. Um, if we talk about TV, I think that's really very good, but I'm not prepared to show that yet. We have the pilot all done, but we'll show that later. Mm -hmm. um, but Tesla, I know there's a big, there's a number of people all over the world that want the Tesla story corrected. Um, the uh, History House, that's what we're known for is history, and we've neglected that. We haven't told history. And why? Why? What we've done is taught history. How did we miss this? So being able to tell the history house I thought was important. Um, and then the immortal uh, and uh, the revolutionary are um, game changing. You know, faith based movies are big right now. I think they're being done wrong. And, um, and I don't mean to slam anybody's faith-based movie or anything. I mean, some are making lots of money and they're affecting a lot of people and that's all great. Not the way Ben and I would do it. And um, not the way we're going to. And, you know, we, we talked on Wednesday night show um, with the, um, the guy who, you know, was, was responsible for the marketing of um, the Polar Express, The Passion of the Christ. I mean, a huge, huge the movies. And, um, uh, and what he said was, it's one thing to say that something's revolutionary or transformative. It's another one you can actually back it up. And he said, everybody says they're gonna, it's transformative. He said, they never are. Passion of the Christ was. Mm -hmm. He said, I believe this one is. And that's what, that's, I'm not interested. I, I met with Dana's um, staff and I said to them in that meeting, I'm not looking for, uh, I'm not looking for somebody that is going to step up to the plate and hit it 100% of the time. 
get a single or a double every, t every time. I, I don't, I don't, that's not good enough. I'm looking for somebody who'll set to this plate and maybe only hit it 30% of the time, 40% of the time, but it's over the wall that 30% of the time, because that's game changing. What, what's happening now is anybody who's thinking in incremental moves, it's not gonna work. We're having this big radio meeting this week where kind of a closed in this room. It's a closed door meeting with some of the best minds in the world, from Australia, from all over the world, to say, I don't, don't talk to me about radio and how we could talk about this or we could talk about that. Tell me, forget about radio. Forget about the microphones. Forget about everything. Forget about talk radio. Forget about music radio. Tell me, because that's over. Tell me in the spoken word, what can we do? Reinvent it from scratch. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for game-changing ideas because today we were talking on the air about a new study that came out said 50% of all jobs will be lost by 2025. 50%. Do you remember when I said that there was going to come a time at a 10-year period of the Industrial Revolution that changed everything in a 100-year period? This is going to change everything in a 10-year period. Check your watches, ladies and gentlemen. We're here. 10 years, 50% of the population will not have the job they have now because they will no longer exist. What does the world look like? Don't do incremental changes. Game changers. It's, it's been a big week here. We've had a lot of big ideas, and I don't, I don't like to spill all of the big ideas at once, and I want to give too much away, but you're talking about changing radio and everything and, and, and a new way to do the spoken word. Door-to-door -door radio. What? Huh? huh? You're fine. See, now don't steal that. <laughs> don't steal that. <laughs> That's one of the 60% that doesn't work. Right, right. Yeah. Um, did you always, I don't know, how long have you wanted to get to this point where you're able to move and, you know, because at one point, you know, you were doing radio since you were 13 years old. Did you ever see yourself at a point where you really could you make know, this I'll move into... I'll tell you a into... secret that I don't know if I've ever shared on the air before. Oh, my. Too much information. Oh, the question is, goes, the... <laughs> do you want the chronic oversharer or not? <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. So there you go. <laughs> I'm going with Tiffany. Oh. Um, when I was seven or eight, it's the reason why, it's the reason why A, I'm so spiritual, and B, uh, why I was an alcoholic. Pivot, really big pivot point in my life. I don't think I've ever shared this. Seven years old. And I hear clear as a bell, clear as a bell. What you will do in your life will be a pivot point. I'm seven. What you do in your life will be a pivot point. What? What? Clear as a bell. Can tell you all about it. Okay. That year I fall in love with radio. Must be radio. Because who knows what they do, what they want to do. I'm born to do radio. I start to do radio. When I meet Pat, I'm starting to ramp up my alcoholism because it seems every time I have an idea, somebody beats me to it. When Pat and I first joined, I was like, this is the way, this is the way radio needs to sound. And I explain it to him and he's like, and he says to me, oh, I wanted to kill him when he said this to me. That's Mark and Brian. I said, what? He said, that's the Mark and Brian show in Los Angeles. That's exactly what they do. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> Every time I had an idea, somebody had beaten me to it. And, I'm, and, and I, no. No, no, no. What I'm going to do is a pivot point. No, I know that to be true. I know I heard that. That just led to frustration and my alcoholism and getting lost. Because that, that was all about me. When I sobered up, I let go of that. And I said, you know what? That was a stupid childhood dream. That was just stupid. I don't even know where that came from. And I completely dismissed and I let all of it go. And it wasn't until around 828 that I went, 
oh my gosh, before I had spent all my time trying to find that pivot point, trying to find what is it we're going to transform, then I let it go. Oh my gosh, I'm standing in front of 500,000 people. Do you know how many people have been changed because of this? Oh my gosh. It's, it's at the pivot point. Now, I don't know if that was a pivot point for people. It was for me. I don't know if that is the pivot point. I don't know. But to, in a very long-winded answer, yeah, I've always known 